Hello friends, today I wanted to talk about the two jewellery processing techniques that we practice at our manufacturing plant, metal stamping and casting, and what items we would choose to stamp or cast for all of our customers. If you're a jewellery designer and you're having your jewellery manufactured with your supplier, I know that with our customers, they're always interested in knowing how their jewellery is made so that they can not only gain some self-knowledge but also use it as a marketing tool to help explain to their customers exactly how their jewellery is made. I'll be sharing lots of visuals throughout to help illustrate my point between the two techniques. So yes, yeah, stay watching and enjoy. If you guys are new here to this channel, welcome. I'm Kim, owner of Thai Design Distributors. We're with third generation family business since 1975, owning our manufacturing plant in Thailand where we specialize in producing high-end sterling silver and gold jewelry. We've got our own in-house range, but the majority of what we do is manufacturing exclusively for our jewellery designer customers. We've always had our head office in the UK and recently a support office in the US. Please do get familiar with this channel by watching my intro video, which gives you an insight about my background in the jewellery industry and the purpose of this channel. Lastly, please don't forget to like or subscribe to the channel for all of the latest tips and videos on jewellery manufacturing. So metal stamping and casting are two methods of metal forming that have been around for over a century and are continuously evolving. Let's start with stamping. First of all, stamping is a method used at my manufacturing plant to make items that I would say are more flat in shape or that require flat pieces to be made in order to then be soldered later together to form a finished shape or piece. So think of flat component pieces used for say lockets and I use locket as a good example because we make so many lockets at our plant um, and each of those sheets are stamped and then soldered and secured with a hinge and pin. It's as you can imagine quite labour intensive. Just going back to stamping though, so we've got lockets, keyrings, cufflinks or larger silverware items like pillboxes, bookmarks, spoons etc. When we have orders for those larger giftware pieces or items consisting of flat components, usually these will be stamped, not all the time but most. Now there are two ways that we utilise the stamping process. The first is the traditional way, a method that we at Tide Design have used for decades. In fact it's a skill that literally has been handed down from father to son. The method requires the silver and alloys being poured into a container, or the technical term being a crucible, and then put under a really hot torch in order to melt the metal. Once it's of a proper temperature, which is judged by the colour, the metal is then poured into a mould in the form of a block and then quelched to cool down. So that's one way to form a block of silver. But with technology forever evolving, there is also another method that we use. This is called continuous casting machine, which basically converts liquid metal, in this case silver or gold, into one long solid strip using a curved metal beam of a particular shape and size depending on what shape die you're looking to use. And that's the second method to form a block of metal. Whichever one you opt for, we'll run that block through our roller die machine into the required thickness, ready for it to be cut and then stamped. And we have our own house stamping machines, all for various usage, which is great because we can provide that flexibility to all our customers, allowing them to choose from a whole range of stamp shapes. Over the years, we've accumulated an assortment of stamping dies, such as the one in the photo behind me, um, and there's two pieces to each of those, and we'll place the metal sheet in between before pressing down on the stamping machine to form the shape of the piece. So stamping is almost always a cold working process, and overall it can deliver faster production, especially when we receive bulk orders of jewellery in higher quantity units. So in terms of volume efficiency, stamping could be regarded as one of the more cost effective options for mass production or manufacturing. Because remember, these are very adaptable and powerful stamping presses, and if we get the precision just right, we can cut down on wasted metal scrap alongside labour, time and energy that's needed for production. Let's talk about casting. At my manufacturing plant, we are probably casting more than stamping, and that's probably just because we can cast almost any design, particularly if it's a 3D shaped jewellery piece, whether it has different shapes or layers or intricate details. So where does the casting process begin? We create a new rubber or silicone mould of new designs for our customers at least once a week from either a metal master or the resin model, the latter being a 3D printed resin which comes from the creation of a CAD, which I won't go into now, but check out this video on CAD designs which we did last year. Anyway, so each design has its own crafted mould which is injected or filled in with a high performance wax. After a few seconds of waiting for the wax to cool, it's then opened and there's your copied wax piece. You'll see at the bottom of each wax design that there's what we call a sprue, a term we use a lot in manufacturing. 
Think of this brew being the passage through which the wax goes into the mould and it also controls the flow and even the direction of the wax into the mould. The sprues are very carefully and skillfully placed on a wax tree until we form a really beautiful finished wax tree that's ready for casting, just like this picture behind me. Leaving the wax department now, next is the investment material being added to a flask around each wax tree to which is then placed into a furnace to be heated using an exact temperature and formula. This is the vacuum casting process and several hours the hot flask is then taken directly into the casting machine and our caster would then pour and add all the silver or gold in the form of pure grains and the alloys into the flask where it would basically fill all the voids of where the wax had been. We allow some time for the metal to melt and then we take it out to quelch and then rinse off any remaining investment material. Note this process is also called lost wax casting because the wax is lost during the process of making the jewellery. There's been a rapid growth for casting in the jewellery industry. I mean, if you think about having to use the same design mould for many pieces, it's definitely a quick and economical method. But casting is all about the machines and making sure that you have a controlled environment to make sure that problems don't arise. Things like oxygen being mixed in with the hot metal when it's added to the casting machine can create quality problems after the pieces have been casted. Or going back to the sprue on the wax pieces, if our artisans aren't careful when placing it at the right location and precision on the wax tree, that too can cause casting issues. It can get very technical and it's taken us years to perfect our casting and we're continuously learning. In addition, technology has evolved a lot for both stamping and casting, so manufacturers like ourselves are having to adjust and adapt to any innovative movements uh, that's going on within the jewellery trade and making sure that you know, we're still competitive and not leading too far ahead in the game. Lastly, it can still be difficult to distinguish between a jewellery piece that's been stamped and a piece that's been casted. A few examples are a coin, for example, could be stamped using an engraved die and it could also be casted. Two symmetrical pieces could have been stamped or casted individually and then soldered together. At times we have to stamp and cast separate pieces which form the same piece. So think of a locket again. The front of it may need to be casted due to the shape and design of it, but the back may be stamped. To learn more about what happens after the casting or stamping process, please watch the video that we did on jewellery manufacturing stages. But for now, I hope you at least have a clearer understanding of the processing techniques that we use at our manufacturing plant. That's it for today, friends. Again, please subscribe to the channel for all the latest tips and advice on jewellery manufacturing. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.